Okay, so what we have here is an example of exactly what you're not supposed to do with your lawnmower. Leave it outside. Now, I admit this has not actually been left in this position for that long. It's been moving around in various locations, but still outside. It's got this sheet metal over the top of it. So it's just been abandoned. I actually did buy this new in, I think it was 2016, maybe 15. Uh, I even put a video out of unboxing it. But just because of the size of it, it's a very small lawnmower. I just got another one. It was taking too long to mow the grass and I seem to remember it was surging as well. It was not running the best. It was running, but it just didn't run very well. So yeah, it just got abandoned. And well, I very much doubt that it runs at all now. You can see the spiders have been taken over. Actually, we should have a date. Yeah, 2016, there we go. So it is 2016. So I think what I'm gonna do because uh, it isn't too late, it's still, the paintwork is still reasonable. I'm going to get it running and I don't know, I might, I might sell it, I don't know. It just depends. I might use it as a backup mower. I just don't want to leave it outside because it is exactly what you're not supposed to do. Yeah, apart from the cobwebs and a bit of rust, it actually isn't too bad. But this mower has had a lot of use. You can see there's quite a lot of wear on the front wheels. I have no idea how many hours it's done, but probably in the region of one to 200, which is a lot for a push mower. There's a 10 step deck height adjustment here, which still works perfectly. And that's the box where the box goes. And I've left leaves in here. Another thing you shouldn't do. It was always well serviced though. I always changed the oil. So, yeah, we should have the right amount. We do. A little bit discoloured, but yep, yeah, that's fine. And as for the fuel, I can already smell that's very stale. Yeah, not too much light. I can see some very stale residue down there. I'll put a torch in there when we're in the workshop. And finally, let's just have a quick look underneath. Yeah, nothing too bad really. As I said, I always serviced it, I always cleaned it out. And I have sharpened the blade many times before. It looks like it could do with another sharpen though. It's a bit dented there. But as I said, it's, it's done quite a lot of work. As it does have the slightest bit of petrol in there, I will just attempt to start it, but I have, I'm gonna give it like a 1% chance of it running. Let's give it a good wash down. It's got all the cobwebs off. So let's have a look in here. Yeah, so quite a dirty air filter. I suppose not too bad looking at the back of it. That was changed about three years ago. It hasn't run for about two years. So uh, I guess that's mostly just dirt from sitting. It's picked up from around here because that was probably dirty when it was installed. So what I need to do is I need to remove the carburetor which is behind this plastic plate here. Uh, also, I'm gonna have to drain and clean that fuel tank. There isn't much in it. I'll have a look inside properly right now. Okay, so I'll just put this in here. Show you what it looks like. Uh, there is quite a bit of dirt in there. Looks like grit or... Yeah, it looks like grit. Maybe some water. It's quite hard to see on this small screen. Kind of looks more like the bottom of a pond rather than the bottom of a fuel tank, which is slightly concerning. Uh, but there isn't much fuel in there at least, so that should be pretty easy to drain. So let's remove this plastic air filter box just here with the primer bulb on it. We've got four screws holding this on, there's two here and there's two here. Oh, 
Okay, and that reveals the plastic carburetor. I don't really see it as a major problem that these are made from plastic. It makes them fairly easy to clean and they obviously don't get any rust in them. Uh, it's not the same idea though as the 35 Classics with the diaphragm and gasket. This has sort of eliminated that problem, so uh, they are better in that respect. And they're not that difficult to work on. So just very carefully give that a quick tug. And that removes from there. We just have the fuel line and the throttle still attached. There is a possibility the fuel line will need to be replaced. Depends how stuck it is. Okay, so that's going to drain the tank. That needs to drain into a dish. If I can just get this car brush out of the way. It will also be full of fuel, most likely. Yep. Okay. Probably no easy way of doing this. As suspected, there really isn't much in there, but what there is in there is disgusting. Yes, yeah, so I'll just make sure we've got all of the fuel out of this carburetor as well. They can hold quite a lot. Well, that seems to be most of it. That should be fine. But well, that's it. That's what was in it. Lovely. Just remove these bolts that hold the top plastic cover on. Really, that should have a clean. There's also some snail poo in here. Well, I'll give that a clean. I'll probably blow it all off with the airline once it's dried out. That'd be the best way. I don't want to get water in the intake. But I can now put the mower back on the ground and we can focus on the carburetor. And you can actually drain the bowl by removing this nut. I just don't tend to. It's just easier just to tip it upside down. So let's just remove the bowl and sometimes the bowl can actually get quite stuck I tend to use a flathead screwdriver to open these and we do still have some dirty fuel in here some very dirty fuel and that is likely why it wasn't running properly although I'm going to give this a full gasket replacement just to make sure it runs as good as it can do. Yeah, I can see water in that. And that is why, as I said before, you don't leave them outside. Yeah, I tell people to, to not leave the mowers outside and then I do it myself. Genius. The float just quite simply pops out. And obviously on the other side of that, we do have the needle valve. Like everything is dirty. But it doesn't look too bad, although it can be good to replace these to prevent the uh, potential issue of fuel overflowing into the cylinder. And now the next piece is quite different to all the other carburetors. This whole piece needs to be clicked out of position. And the way to do that is to basically push it out with a flathead screwdriver. So that has allowed it to move. And you can see it is sticking out ever so slightly. And there we have it. And this piece actually splits in half again. It's all contained within this single replacement part. You can actually change this whole piece. Uh, and yeah, it just incorporates everything. So the main jet, the emulsion tube, everything. It's all here. Um, I can already see that the O-rings don't look that good. So that just splits there. It can be a good idea just to replace this, but you can also just clean them. But you've got to be careful. If you're going to use carburetor cleaner, 
It will rot the O-rings if you don't remove them first. Yeah, you can see how perished that O-ring is just there. That needs to be replaced. There is also the main one that goes over the top. That one's very simple to remove. That one actually doesn't look too bad. This ball bearing here can actually be pushed out and it is worth pushing it out because then you can clean through this tube much more easily and thoroughly. And there it is. You've just got to be careful not to lose it. But you can see the access now is very good down here. It actually doesn't look that dirty. I think it might actually be the seal. That o-ring might be my problem along with the water in the bowl. It's going to give everything a really good spray through with the carb cleaner. I don't like to you know, tell people what to do, but I've seen videos in the past of people just spraying carb spray all over their fingers. This stuff is really bad for you. I use these chemical gloves and they seem really good. So that's the two halves cleaned up and they are now ready to be put back together. I just need to get the new gasket kit. So I just installed this on here. If you go over the middle piece first, it makes it much easier to fit the O-ring. After that, these two pieces do click together. And then of course we have the ball bearing that just goes into the top there. As I got the entire kit, I'm just going to change the, uh, the needle valve. I'm not going to do the seat. Besides, the rubber part is actually on the tip of the needle rather than the seat itself, so that should be fine. Um, so that just goes onto the underside of the bowl, like so. And then that goes into there. And then it will just click into place. After that, we have the main jet assembly, which will only actually fit one way round. And then we have the bowl. As you can see, we do have this little trough in the bottom, little rectangle. That is for the bottom of the main jet assembly to sit in. Uh, if you put it the other way, it might still work, but this just gives it good clearance. So that just goes on like that. And then we can put the screws in. I've also cleaned the fuel tank. It is amazingly difficult to try and get the camera to focus in there. But yeah, you can just about see inside. It's a vast improvement over what it was. I've cleaned all the other parts as well, so it is ready for reassembly. But the only thing which I don't have is a new air filter. I thought I had loads of these, but actually I had the other style. So I'm just going to have to clean this. It actually isn't that old, this. Um, it is possible to clean it with soapy water. So that's what I'll do. But first, let's fit the carburetor to the mower. It's a bit stained, but it's clean. And yeah, I'm just gonna use some lubricating oil. This actually is lubricating oil. It leaves a film of oil on the filter to trap dust. Unlike some other brands like WD-40, that will just evaporate. Um, so yeah, that is, um, that is ready to fit. And the reason why I've done it this way is so I can blow the rest of the engine clean without getting anything into the air intake. Just have the cover to put on. Now 
Well, that's an improvement. It just removes all the dirt and any buildup of grass, which could prevent the engine from cooling properly. Now I'm going to drain the oil, but I'm not going to refill it again until I've sharpened the blade, because this means I can tip it upside down. If there's no oil in it, then it's not going to get into areas where it shouldn't be. I'm just going to suck it out, as I do have really good access here. Okay, well obviously it's never going to get every little bit out, but that oil wasn't too dirty anyway. That was about five minutes worth of pumping, so I'll put the dipstick back in. I'll reattach the fuel tank, put the recoil cover back on, and then I can tip it upside down, take the blade off, sharpen it, put it back on, and finish off with some fresh oil. The blade isn't too bad, a bit of rust, a few dents in there, but that will clean up nicely. Just give it a good sharpen. So I'll do that on the bench grinder. That's the blade sharp and balanced. You can see we've got a nice flat edge here. It's not all dented from where rocks have hit it. Uh, if you use a hand grinder, you can keep a consistent angle. It's much more difficult with a bench grinder to keep one angle there, but that is still gonna produce a nice clean cut. All that's left to do now is to refill the engine with oil and I'm going to use genuine Briggs & Stratton oil. I just buy the really big drums and then decant it into one of these. Not sure exactly how much it takes, especially as it's not, it won't be 100% empty, as I just use the, uh, the sucking tool. But I'll just keep checking on the dipstick. There's no rush. And we'll get there eventually. Okay, so far we are just reaching the minimum. So it needs a bit more. Okay, let's see where we are now. Perfect. Yep, that's ever so slightly over the top mark, but once it runs and circulates the oil a bit, uh, that will probably go down slightly. So yeah, it needs to be run, and then we can check it once it's cooled down again after running. I'll pop some petrol in and we'll see if the problem is solved.
And there we have it. That has fixed the problem. It's running really well. So it was actually about six hours ago that I last ran this engine since I did the demonstration. So we should now have an accurate reading. And as you can see, it is ever so slightly over. Yeah, it, it's a bit over. Uh, not, it's not going to cause a problem, but I think I probably would just suck a little bit out. You may ask, if it's not going to cause a problem, why are you bothering to suck some out? My honest answer is, because this is YouTube, and people will pick you up on anything. There we go. Perfect. So that is this little repair project finished. It's literally just a quick fill-in job between my restoration videos. I've got some exciting projects coming up soon though. As for this mower though, it's now going to be put away undercover and I'll decide what I'm going to do with it. I think I'm going to keep it as a backup mower because well, I do have several mowers, but you can never have too many. That's what I've found. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's actually a good mulcher, so I'm quite happy to keep it as a backup. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And until the next one, see you again soon.